What's up, guys? In today's video, I'm going to review a new ETF that is starting to gain traction and popularity. It's called COWS. So we're going to get into that. But real quick, my portfolio currently at $56,507.72. Today was a great day. My portfolio grew by $815.95, and I earned $22.61 in dividends for a money-weighted return of 1.47%. But with that being said, let's get into this new ETF. It's a dividend ETF. So it's called the COWS Pacer US Cash COWS 100 ETF. Currently year to date, well, it's current price, $52.02. Year to date, it's only up about 0.06%. And it does have an expense ratio of 0.49%. But let's look into this stock. So first, I'm going to go into the dividends. So it currently has a low dividend yield of 1.93%, annual payout of $1. And it does say it has a five-year growth rate of 18.46%. However, only two years of dividend growth. So I'm not sure how reliable that is. We can go into the dividend history and see what's going on over here. So honestly, just looking at this, the dividend, it's all over the place. Kind of like SCHD. So not really going to get that much information right now from this chart. So let's go over to the fact sheet. So this ETF, their strategy is a driven exchange traded fund that aims to provide capital appreciation over time by screening the Russell 1000 for the top 100 companies based on free cash flow. So this is just saying the free cash flow is cash remaining after a company has paid expenses, interest, taxes, long-term investments, and companies use it for stock buybacks, dividends, or mergers and acquisitions. So the ability to generate a high free cash flow yield indicates a company is producing, producing more cash than it needs to run the business, and it can invest in growth opportunities or buybacks, dividends, and so on. So they focus on quality large cap companies with a high free cash flow yield. They trade at a discount and they have long-term capital appreciation. So let's scroll down to their objective, their strategy. So they start with the Russell 1000. They screen the companies for the top 100. They're ranked based on the tra trailing 12 month period for the highest free cash flow. And in the end, you get the top 100 large cap companies with the highest free cash flow yield. It's weighted by free cash flow. Once again, the highest 12 month trailing. Their holdings are capped at 2% for each company at time of rebalance. And it's reconstituted and rebalanced quarterly. Let's scroll down again. First thing I want to show you, fund inception is 12-16-16. So it has been around for quite a while, but it's just now gaining that popularity. So let's look at their top 10 holdings first. They have DR Horton, which is a builder, home builder. It's actually my wife says that one's pretty good quality. So the weighting here is actually really low, as I mentioned, 2.23%. Next they have CBS, 2.21%. Then they have Lennar, my wife says a horrible builder, really low quality. So not sure how I feel about them being not only in the top 10, but the number three. But at least the weighting is low, 2.17%. They have booking holdings at 2.15, Qualcomm, 2.14, 3M, 2.1, Abvi, 2.07, Gilead and Cisco at 2%, and then Chevron at 1.98%. And this is pretty crazy to see the top 10 total at only 21.07%. Usually this is pushing the 40 to 50 plus percent. Now we go over to their sector breakdown, which is 27.72% in energy. That's really high for me. Usually I'd want the weightings at about 20% or lower. And then consumer discretionary at 21%. So right off the bat, you have over 48%, almost 49% in 
into energy and consumer discretionary, discretionary, which if there was a recession or a mark or a downturn in the economy, I believe these two sectors would be hit pretty hard. But next they have healthcare at 14.45%, materials at 12.35, industrials 10.02, information technology 9.63, consumer staples at 2.87, utilities 1.16, and then communication services at 0.79%. So I'd probably like to see them increase their consumer staples and utilities and lower their energy and consumer discretionary. But going over to the portfolio back test, if we start with $1 million, we're gonna compare cows with the S&P 500 for now. I will make another video comparing cows to the SCHD and Degro. But for now, just the S&P 500. So if we start with initial balance of 1 million, this is actually really impressive. Cows ends up losing on the overall equity at 2.4 million, million with an M. And the S&P 500 is only $40,000 more at 2.44 million. So not that big of a difference. Then you can see cows, their best year was 41.7%. It's probably based on energy stocks. And then S&P 500 best year, 31.35%. Worst year for cows, negative 10.04. So they actually beat the S&P 500 on the best and the worst. S&P 500 negative 18.19%. Then if we look at this chart, you can see that cows in blue, they actually had a bigger drop during uh, the pandemic. They lost about 400,000 versus the S&P 500, 300K. However, they both rallied back really well, actually. And we do actually have the January data. So, you know, only 40K under the S&P 500 since the inception of this ETF. This is actually performing really well. Then let's go into the income, one of my favorite parts. So as you can see from this chart, you know, started in 2017, cows was at 23,000, S&P was at 21.4K. And then this, the cow's dividend, it's really uh, inconsistent. Started off higher than the S&P 500, then it's lower, then higher, lower. Then it's not till about last year where you start to see it's a little bit more consistent and it's growing. So looking at this, looking at this chart, this is probably why from 2021 to 2023, that's probably why they're saying that the dividend growth rate was 18, over 18%. So I'd really like to see a few more years of data on this stock, on this ETF. You know, let's get the full dividend income for 24 and 25. And then we can compare 2022 to 2025. It's about four years. And then I can have like a, know better opinion on this stock if they continue to increase their dividend over the next two years then i could really see this etf being something that you would consider and a contender to maybe if not schd degrow at least 